Hello, welcome back to Making Things with String. Uh, this is my Floss Tube Plus episode two. Uh, my name's Kate, if you haven't been here before. Uh, if you have watched my first episode, thanks for coming back. Um, and yeah, so this is, a, this is a YouTube channel about primarily cross stitch and knitting uh, and crochet and various other crafts uh, done with string, <laughs> but mostly uh, cross stitch and knitting. Um, in today's video, I plan to do a little bit of an update on my works in progress. Um, I would like to talk about a new thread management strategy that I'm using for my um, for my large full coverage design. And I would like to talk about some plans that I have for fall and winter stitching uh, and see if I can get some opinions about what I should start. Uh, so yeah, first of all, since the last uh, time that I recorded a video, since the first time I recorded a video, uh, I did uh, finish my happy camper cross stitch piece i fully finished it so i showed the finished stitch in my last video uh, but i did frame it up and gave it to its recipients those were uh, uh, my in-laws so my husband neil's uh, father bob and uh, his wife bernice um, we went camping with them this weekend at dollar lake in nova scotia uh, and so since we were camping, they were there with their camper, uh, I figured I would finish that, fully finish that up for them and bring it and uh, gave it to them. So uh, I'll put up a picture here of that finished framed uh, cross stitch and just talk a little bit, a reminder that this pattern uh, or chart is called Happy Camper. It's by Lori Holt. Um, I stitched this piece with DMC thread on some kind of Ada. I do think it was about 18 count, probably some oatmeal type of Ada. Uh, and I stitched it to threads over one fabric thread. Uh, and they were really happy with it and hung it up in their camper. So I was, I was pleased to be able to hand that off to them. I do have another finish. This one is a knitting finish. Uh, and that is the uh, Hermione's Everyday Sock that I was knitting for my friend Carolyn. So last time I showed you uh, this first sock that I had completed. You'll notice I've tied in the ends, um, which is impressive for me because I tend to procrastinate on that. Uh, but these were a gift, so I had to do it. So finish the first sock. And when I showed this second sock to you last time, I was right here where this stitch marker indicates. So I had finished a knit up to here. And you'll notice that the whole sock is also finished. So I finished this pair of socks for my friend Carolyn. Um, so that's great. Um, and yes, so this was fun. Uh, a nice little knit for my friend Carolyn. And having finished these socks, I was contemplating how I will now have to mail them to her. And something else uh, came into my memory. I remembered that the, these socks aren't the only garment that I was knitting for Carolyn. Um, she had had a knitted garment that she loved. Um, purchased from somewhere that had a hole in it and she when she was living here with uh, near me in Nova Scotia uh, she asked me if I could repair it for her and I had a look and the hole was not something that I felt like I could repair especially because I didn't have uh, any more of the yarn that this that this uh, garment was made out of so that was sort of beyond my capabilities but what I did do is um, I took the garment from her and I frogged it. Um, I still have the yarn for that, but then instead of just remaking the garment with the yarn that it was knit from, because it would be a little bit smaller just because of some of the yarn 
um, was destroyed in the frogging process and there was that hole as well. So instead of re-knitting the garment with the yarn that it was knit from, I found some new yarn and tried my best to reproduce that garment. It was actually a very simplistic shape. And I had started knitting this for her uh, already. Um, so this is like a whip that I had started years ago or a, few, a couple years ago at least and just hadn't finished and so I thought I wonder how far along I was with that and I wonder if I could finish it up for her. Um, so I pulled it out and let's see if I can find, I think I do have a stitch me, yes I do, okay. So you can see there's another little stitch marker here and so all I had to do was knit this much of it. Uh, and so that was enough to finish it and I've, I've finished this garment. So it's a bit of a strange little garment. I guess maybe you would call it a poncho. So I knit it in one long strip. I folded it in half like so. And I sewed up the seam. Uh, I guess about halfway or two thirds of the way. Uh, and let me try and pop it on to give you an idea of what it might look like. So this is the garment. It's a sort of aces. This is not blocked yet and the ends are not tied in. So hopefully after blocking this little edge won't roll up quite so much. But here is what this little garment will look like. The ends will be tied in. And I'm going to send this along to Carolyn as well. So I've flipped it um, so that the pearl edge is on the outside because that is what the original design had. But this yarn, and unfortunately I don't know, um, I don't remember the type of yarn that I got to knit this in. I know that I purchased it uh, from LK Yarns in Halifax. Gonna take it off again. I purchased it from LK Yarns in Halifax, but it's a really cool, I mean, it's a, it's a very nice gray yarn. I hope you can see that the thickness is quite variegated. So it makes this really beautiful textured fabric when you knit it up. And yeah, this is my little poncho thingy that I that I made for my friend Carolyn. So that's another finish. A finish of a whip that I never showed you. It's probably not the only time that will happen. All right, so I have a couple cross stitch whips that I made some progress on over the over the past couple weeks since I last made a video. So I'll give you a little update on those. The first one is my Summer Beach Collection Triptych. So uh, as a reminder, the, there's, these are three little patterns that I'm stitching in a triptych that I got from uh, a little beach collection booklet that came with a World of Cross Stitching um, magazine. And I chose three of these uh, little designs to stitch together. So I don't have a, a photo of what these will look like in the end, just because um, the little book doesn't have finished or mock-ups, doesn't have finished pictures or mock-ups, it just has the charts, so I can't really show them to you, but uh, I'm quite far along on this now, so you should be able to get a pretty good idea of what it will be like. So last time I had just part of this lighthouse done but now you can see that i've finished two out of the three panels and i'm working on the third so i want to bring this in a little bit closer and just show you how much that back stitch made that little lighthouse pop and just to show you that second uh, panel which says i lost my heart to the sea and they have some beautiful back stitch in there as well. Um, and I just really love how this is turning out. Um, 
overall, I really like it. There's a couple things, small details. Um, one of them is the back stitch on the lower portion of the lighthouse. I'm not super familiar with doing back stitch. I haven't done a lot of it. But these ones, you know, I like to go one uh, one fabric thread at a time. So if the back stitch spans over four squares, I will do four, you know, back stitch stitches. Um, but these ones just spanned like diagonally over, let's see, one, two, three, four, over six rows. And I wanted the line to look nice and straight and not jagged. So I just floated them over top and they look a little bit wobbly from certain angles, as opposed to the stitches say up here, which are really well anchored and very straight. So that's something that I'm not the hugest fan of, these lines here. Um, I also think if I were to stitch this again, I would change the color of the ground that the lighthouse is sitting on. Um, right now, it's very similar colors. It's two these two colors from the light beam from the lighthouse, and then a third sort of sandy color. Um, which is fine, but just around around where I live, lighthouses aren't generally sitting on ground of this color. So the thing that comes to mind probably is the Peggy's Cove lighthouse. Um, and it is sitting on these beautiful, vast gray rock outcroppings. And so um, after I finished stitching this, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if it had been like more Peggy's Cove-ish and I could have done that by changing the color of the ground there. And so that's a change that maybe I would make in the future. So yeah, this third panel is gonna be a little fishing village that looks very Peggy's Cove-esque, uh, like a little harbor town uh, when it's done. And I've left a little bit of space in between these panels and my hope is to do a border around um, all three of them and in between each of them. Um, and I'm planning to use uh, something derived from some of the backstitch motifs here in the middle panel, but just have them go all the way around. I like how they sort of look wavy or windy. Um, and so hopefully that will work out, but I'm gonna give it a try. So that's where I am with this, uh, with this summer beach collection triptych. So the next piece I wanna update you on is my Heaven and Earth Designs uh, full coverage piece. This piece is, uh, or the chart is titled Needs No Paint. Um, and the art is by Jill Clare. And like I said, it's a Heaven and Earth Design uh, chart. So it was converted into a cross stitch by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I'll pop a little picture of what the finished art or the full art looks like here. Um, and I might post as well, uh, hopefully I'll do this for my, uh, for my previous, uh, previous piece as well. Uh, just a picture of what it kind of looked like last time I showed it to you. Um, and I will show it to you now so you can see what it looks like currently. So here's where I am. I'm gonna leave this little Q-snap on. Um, all of the work I did was over in this section here. So here's where I'm at uh, on Needs No Paint. Uh, this is so much fun to work on. Um, it's very super tiny little stitches. Uh, I think it's about a 25 count um, fabric and I'm doing two threads over one. I'm doing tent stitch on this piece. And I'm loving um, how this watercolor area is, is turning out and it's just a ton of fun to stitch on it. Um, so this is going really well. Last time that I shot a video, I was at about 9.5% on this and I'm now up to 12.9%. 
Um, so this is coming along really, really great. I'm sure it's quite a bit of time before it's done still, but I'm really loving, I'm really loving working on this. So last time I talked a little bit about how I'm going about stitching this piece and I had a bit of a, a change in how I am um, storing my threads for this piece, I guess. So I thought I would talk about that a little bit. Um, I don't have a full set of DMC threads currently. Um, what, what I'm doing is I'm just buying threads as I need them for projects. And I have a um, case that I carry them all in or that I put them all in. So I'll show that to you. So I have this recollections sorting, what is it called? Recollections, crafting storage with tray. The tray is not currently in here, um, but the bottom part of this, and this is a little bit messy because it's just how I am. But these are all the DMC threads that I have. Okay, they're all stored in here, bobbinated. I have some in Ziploc bags, any colors that aren't bobbinated yet, I have in some, in some numbered Ziploc bags ready for when I need them. Um, but yeah, most of my threads are bobbinated. And when I had been working on Needs No Paint, I was running into a couple frustrations. So the first frustration is just simply that in some areas, the piece is very confetti heavy, as they say. So there's a lot of like, just one stitch of this color here, one stitch of this color here, a couple stitches of this color, not big blocks of color. And so I was finding that I have to stitch one stitch, then cut, tie off that thread, cut it, go look in my box for the next thread that I need, unravel the bobbin, uh, get out the one piece of thread that I need, thread my needle, do a stitch, tie off that, cut it, you know, rewind up whatever I didn't use off the bobbin of the color I just used, put it back in its numerical spot here, find my next number, etc. I was still making a lot of progress, but that's very time consuming. That's a lot of time spent doing stuff with thread that is not part of the craft. It is. I mean, you, you get through it by knowing that, that that is all part of it and that all of that is like part of the part of the crafting, but I would like to be stitching more. Another thing that was bothering me is that because of the way that I am stitching this piece, I talked about this last time, I'm trying to do just 10 by 10 squares, one 10 by 10 square at a time, roughly. Um, so, and because there's all of that confetti, I don't, need very long pieces of thread each time that I'm getting thread. In fact, smaller pieces are better because then I'm wasting less thread. I'm throwing away less thread. Um, so I want to be, when I'm working on Needs No Paint, I want to be working with short lengths of thread. But for other projects, which I'm also pulling from these same bobbins for, like my uh, beach triptych, I want quite long pieces of thread. And so I was having this weird problem on any threads that are in more than one project, there would be like a cutoff length wrapped around the bobbin that was like maybe not even the length that I wanted. Anyway, so I wanted some combination uh, where I had the threads that I was using to stitch Needs No Paint separate from these bobbins, uh, but I didn't want to have a whole new separate skein of all of the DMC threads. I only want one skein of each color for DMC threads uh, instead of buying like a new skein for every single project that I, that I need that color for. Um, so the first thing that came to mind uh, is these um, thread sorting 
devices that you can buy. I'll try and find a picture of what I'm thinking about um, from Amazon. And uh, I've seen people use these before. And they seem really great because you can have a little spot for each one of the threads in your project and you just uh, loop them, tie them on loosely to this device. And then whenever you need a thread, you just, boop, you know, pull one off. Um, and it's very quick and easy. And then you have all of the threads for your project just on this one device. So that sounded great. However, it re would have required me to purchase a new plastic thing, which I'm not like the biggest fan of doing. Uh, it would have taken time because I would have had to order it. I've never seen something like this at my local Michaels. And uh, I thought I could make it myself. <laughs> so I, I took that idea and I looked around at the stuff that I had here in my house and I made myself some cards and I'm gonna show them to you. So these are just the threads for Needs No Paint. I'm gonna make them look a little bit prettier for you. There's two cards. Here's the first one with all of the DNC numbers and one little length of thread from the bobbin tied on to each spot. I just have this really thick cardstock paper. I folded it in half. I punched holes with a regular size hole punch um, all down the side. And then I, on this one, I glued a piece of dot grid paper to write uh, the DMC numbers on. But you can see that I have this second card as well because that one wasn't big enough for all of the threads that are in this project. I had to make a second one. Um, and I didn't paste, I didn't uh, glue the dot grid paper on this one. I just wrote directly on the cardstock. So this is what they look like. So they're not the most professional thing ever, <clears throat> but but it's working out really well and I, I like this solution. So I still only have one main bobbin for each DMC color, uh, but whenever I run out of one of, the, uh, uh, one of the colors on this card, I just go to the bobbin, I measure out a thread of the length that I want for this piece, snip it off and loop it on to here. So, yeah, I'm really liking that. And I have seen other people doing, uh, doing this method on, on floss tube, uh, doing it this way. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm liking it. And uh, yeah, that's my little DIY for the week. So I have one more whip or work in progress that I want to talk about. This is a knitting whip. Um, I decided to start a new pair of socks once I finished uh, the Hermione's Everyday Socks for Carolyn. Um, and I wanted to uh, knit something from my Lane magazine. And so there's one sock pattern in here. It's called Soulpour. And here is what those socks will look like. Beautiful. Um, I didn't choose blue, I chose a beautiful skein of this pinky, peachy, yellowy yarn that I had in my stash. This is by Will You Dare, which is a local hand-dyed yarn maker from Nova Scotia. Uh, I wonder if there's a color here. I don't see a color listed. Uh, but yes, here's the information about that hand dyer. Uh, and I got this skein of yarn last year when I was visiting Lunenburg with my friend Jill. So I started knitting a soul pour sock. Um, and here it is so far. Try and stretch out this little lace pattern for you a little bit. 
Here's how it's looking. Once it's blocked out, it'll look a little bit more like this. So this is the top of the sock. This is the bottom of the sock. A couple interesting things about um, this sock pattern. It is knit from the toe up, which is different than I usually knit my socks. Usually I, li I knit them from the cuff down. I have done toe up socks before, but it had been a while and uh, I had to re-watch the video on how to do Judy's Magic Cast On and I had to, uh, I had to restart the toe several times uh, before getting it right. <laughs> but now it looks great. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting thing, you knit from the toe up. This is nice because you really, um, you get a, a good idea of how long the sock is going to be and I can like try it on more easily as I'm going. So I like that. I also like, this is a really cool technique to use. If you buy a skein of yarn, you can sort of divide it evenly into two little mini skeins. And if you knit your sock from the toe up, once you get past the heel, uh, you can just kind of go ahead and knit uh, the leg of the sock until the sock, until the yarn is all gone, essentially. And you know that you'll have enough for your other sock because you've got an, uh, an, an equal separate skein on its own. I didn't do that here because I never want my sock legs to be that long. Like there's always leftover yarn, hence my, uh, granny stripe blanket that I'm making with all my, all my ends. Anyway, I do like knitting from the toe up. It's a cool little change. And obviously this little lace pattern is a nice change up from my normal uh, Hermione's Everyday Sock go-to. Uh, and it's a nice, um, easy, intuitive little lace pattern too. So it's very easy for me to tell where I am and what I need to do next without having to constantly look at the pattern. So that's great. Another thing that you might've noticed is this strange little blue piece of yarn that is in my sock. Um, and that's there because this pattern has you do an afterthought heel, um, which I also have done before, although I usually do a true afterthought, so I don't use, um, I don't use waste yarn like this. I just cut <laughs> into my sock um, and then, pull out one row, one half row of stitches. And so what you do when you're ready to do the heel after the rest of the sock is done, is you come here and get rid of this waste yarn and you pick up stitches on either side of this uh, opening and you knit the heel out from here. This pattern I believe uses what's called the fish lips kiss heel, which I've heard a lot about, but I've never done myself. And so I was excited to see that it's used in this pattern. And now I have the pattern for fish lips kiss heel. So if I like it, um, I can keep using it. And those are my soul pore socks for now. I'm really enjoying this and they're knitting up very quickly. I've only knit on these for um, a day or two. So those are all my projects that I'm gonna be showing uh, in this video. For the rest of the video, what I wanna do is talk about some plans that I have for cross stitch and knitting uh, for the fall. Uh, fall is one of my favorite months. Uh, Christmas is coming up and I am a big gift crafter, as you may, not, as you may have noticed. Um, I do like to knit and cross stitch things for other people and give them as gifts. So I'm starting to think about Christmas and what I might want to uh, what I might want to do for gifts, um, but also just a couple fun things coming up um, that I want to take part in. So the first thing that I'm thinking about is uh, something that I've heard of in some people's floss tubes called Sampler September. So I guess the notion is that you would um, start or at least stitch on samplers during September uh, because it's alliterative, I guess. Um, but I found this an interesting idea because I don't typically stitch a lot of samplers. So I showed the woodland sampler uh, last time that I finished and I guess that's technically a sampler because it's called a woodland sampler. Um, but it's not what I think of when I think of 
a cross stitch sampler, right? When you think of a cross stitch sampler, you think of um, a piece that might have some kind of scene in it, like a house with some trees or plants or flowers or whatever, maybe an ocean side or whatever. Um, but it also has some other characteristics like an alphabet, say, uh, or these disjoint, it's like this disjointed nature of a sampler. And so that's what I think of when I think of a cross stitch sampler. I don't tend to stitch things like that. Um, and it's not because I don't think that, like I don't like them, I do like them, but often when I am looking at samplers, to me, they do kind of look all the same. You know what I mean? Like they sort of are very similar uh, to one another. So I don't know, just like I think a sampler has to be very unique in order for it to jump out and speak to me, or at least that's what I've been finding. So I thought Sampler September would be a good challenge. I thought I'm gonna find some samplers that I do want to stitch and I'm gonna start one in September and see how far I can get. So I picked three potential samplers uh, that I would like to start. I'm gonna pick one. Um, and if you have an opinion about which of these you think I should start, then definitely leave a comment below letting me know like which one is your favorite. Um, so I'm just going to pop up some pictures here and talk about each of these a little bit. Uh, so the first one that I'm thinking about doing is called uh, Ragnarok, and this is a long dog samplers uh, pattern. And uh, I've, I've heard a lot about long dog samplers. I have never stitched anything from them. Um, I am uh, particularly interested in uh, the sort of lore behind this Ragnarok piece and importantly so is my husband so I know that this is something that uh, we would like both enjoy having in our house I think I would enjoy stitching it too I imagine myself stitching this piece uh, in a fancy thread too which is something that I've never done I've always used DMC um, but I would love to invest in some kind of beautiful uh, variegated specialty floss to stitch uh, this in although that's probably going to be true of all three of the different samplers that I'm considering uh, but just so you know the idea isn't that it will be the sort of matte black that is represented in the in the picture or the mock-up on the long dog website so that's option one all right here's option two uh, this is called Scandinavian Christmas sampler and this is a pattern by modern folk embroidery so modern folk embroidery is another uh, designer that I have Jacob I've heard a lot of people uh, talking about um, his designs and a lot of people are stitching them but I have never I have never stitched a modern folk embroidery piece. So I, when I thought I'm going to do a sampler, I came, I came to their website and, and had a look and this Scandinavian Christmas sampler really spoke to me. So I really love it. I think it's beautiful and I would love to have this as a Christmas piece that I put up uh, in my house every year. So yes, again, some kind of beautiful uh, thread and that's option number two for a sampler that I might stitch. All right, so the third potential sampler is another modern folk embroidery pattern. This one is called Two Quaker Sister Samplers. So this is sort of cheating because the pattern includes two and they would be sister pieces. Uh, I would just be stitching one of them for the September challenge, but uh, I would have the other one and probably stitch it as well. So Two Quaker Sister Samplers, um, they're, they're beautiful little samplers. Um, and they have a nice saying on them that I like. So the first one says, whoso findeth me findeth love. And the second one says, for I am thine and thou art mine. So I thought that was really cute. It's very lovey-dovey and it makes me think of my husband. And so I would like to have that up in our house too. Um, yeah, so 
those are my three things I'm thinking about for Sampler September. Let me know what you think of those three. Which one is your favorite? All right, so because fall is coming, fall is around the corner, I have also been thinking about uh, starting some spooky stitches in honor of Halloween. Um, I don't think I'm quite as into Halloween as a lot of floss tubers seem to be. No shade at all. I think it's totally awesome and I love it. Uh, and I do like Halloween and I do love spooky and horror movies and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm excited and I want to get on the bandwagon. I want to be stitching something uh, spooky during the month of October. So there's a few things that I'm thinking of. Uh, I would really like to start uh, this piece called Leshy and I'll put a picture of it here. So the pattern is called Leshy Guardian of the Woods and this is a pattern by the Witchy Stitcher. Um, so I just absolutely love this, uh, this pattern and I want to stitch it. So I would love to do that in October. Something else that uh, I will be getting is the Divination Stitch Box. So I ordered the Divination Stitch Box, which is by the Starlight Stitchery, and that should be shipping anytime, and uh, I, it should arrive hopefully soon. Uh, so I'll definitely be doing a video about that when it comes to kind of unbox it and show you all what came in it. Um, and I'm imagining that there will be, there's several patterns in those stitch boxes usually, so I am imagining that there will be something in there that I might like to stitch in October as well. Um, so yeah, to TBD, but looking forward to receiving that. So another cross stitch pattern that I'm going to be casting on soon is going to be a gift for my mom. So mom, if you are watching this video, I don't know if you are watching it, but if you are, uh, I mean, you can keep watching if you don't care about knowing about what your gift is, but if you want, maybe you could skip forward to this time in the video, and that's when I'm done talking about your gift, okay? Um, so I'm going to be um, kidding up and starting this uh, geometric turtle pattern. Um, I have... Uh, I've done a few of these geometric designs already. Um, my YouTube icon is a cute little bird that I've done, and I did a moose, and I did a uh, cat, a little orange tabby cat. Uh, I also got this turtle pattern when I was purchasing all of those. And this one is for my mother because she loves turtles. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna give that to her for Christmas, I think, if it's done in time, which that's the goal. The goal is to be done by Christmas. So these geometric patterns are all by Riticuna on Etsy, and that's where, that's where I got them all. And they're really, really fun to stitch up because they look cool in the end, um, but they're fun and easy to stitch because it's all little blocks or triangles of um, color. So I love stitching these, they're, they're just a ton of fun. And uh, yeah, this is, this is one that I'm gonna be kidding up soon and making for my dear mummy uh, who loves turtles. It reminds me of when we went on our family trip to Hawaii and saw, you know, huge sea turtles while we were there. Uh, it reminds me of the time that mom and I got tattoos together. Uh, she got a Polynesian style uh, turtle tattooed on her shoulder and I got my neuron. <laughs> there we go. I have a background in cognitive psychology, a PhD in psychology, and so um, I got uh, my little neuron. And mom and I went together and got those tattoos um, at the same time. So yeah, that's what I think about when I think of my mom and turtles. All right, so before I talk about my plans for knitting cast-ons, I want to take a pause here and talk for just a second about cross-stitch fabric. Uh, I primarily stitch on Ada. That's kind of what I started with and what I've stuck with. I like stitching on Ada, it's totally fine. 
And on top of that, uh, not only do I mostly stitch on Ada, I mostly stitch on like white or oatmeal Ada. <laughs> I don't, or black, I guess. I do stitch on black a lot. But I don't, I've never stitched on any sort of like hand dyed uh, or uh, anything much more interesting than just pretty standard, what I would consider pretty standard um, Ada. So, on top of like there being all kinds of beautiful colors and some hand dyed uh, options for Ada, I know also that there are sort of a lot of other options fabric wise for cross stitch. So there's linens, there's even weaves, um, and then there's just, you know, tons of uh, color options with hand dyed and otherwise. Um, I want to branch out into different kinds of fabrics. Um, I want to stitch with some interesting colors and um, hand dyed fabrics. Um, but I don't really know where to start. I've sort of tried, I've said several times, all right, I'm gonna go buy some fancy fabric and um, just end up getting overwhelmed and I'm unsure and I'm having to do all of this purchasing online because I don't have a local needle shop, an LNS, that I know of that sells these fabrics. So I would feel much more comfortable if I could go and touch and look at and feel. Um, it feels a little weird to me to purchase it online. So what I'm looking for are recommendations for like, what is your favorite fabric? specifically like where can I buy it um, I'm interested in something probably to start out with something lighter in color although not exclusively interested in uh, lighter in color I mean I would look at dark fabrics because for example some of the samplers that I want to stitch might look really great with a dark background and lighter thread um, but yeah I think it might be like a, a, dipping my toes in might be a little bit easier if I was purchasing a lighter color that like most patterns would look good on for example um, yeah just let me know if you have any suggestions if you have like a particular fabric that is your go-to um, or if you from any of the patterns that I just mentioned that I want to look into starting if you have any uh, fabrics that you know of that would go really well with any of those let me know I'm interested in, in, in branching out there oh another thing that I prefer is to order from within Canada to support uh, Canadian businesses, but also to reduce um, the cost for shipping, both monetarily and environmentally. So I, I would appreciate it if the fabric is available from like a Canadian retailer uh, or a Canadian source. Um, but again, just like the light fabric, that's not a deal breaker. It's just something that I would prefer. Like I would choose a Canadian source if I could. Um, yeah, so let me know about your fabrics. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is a couple knitting patterns that I'm going to be starting up soon. I don't have the yarn yet, but I'm planning to purchase it and get these going. So um, these are going to be gifts for my niece and nephew. So Sam and Chantal, if you are watching this video by any chance and you don't want to be like spoiled on what this is, then stop watching. Um, but I think that at least Sam might have an inkling that I'm going to be doing this because he, uh, sent me a picture of one of these and asked if I could make one for, uh, his daughter, my niece, Elena. So I'm going to be casting on, uh, or kidding up or whatever you call it, getting ready for the Phelan fox cowl pictured here. And also the Dalton Dino cowl. So I think my brother sent me pictures of both of these and I found, uh, I found these patterns, I believe on Etsy. Uh, they're designed by Heidi May of Velvet Acorn Designs. And um, I bought them quite a while ago actually and just like kind of haven't gotten around to uh, getting them going. But I love them, they're so cute. I wanna knit the little 
a fox for Elena in a slightly bigger size, and I want to knit the little dino cow for um, new baby Hunter, who isn't that new anymore, but that's uh, Elena's little brother. So I thought that would be cute and fun, and they'll be like pretty easy, quick knits because they're they're knit with like super bulky yarn. So I'm planning on casting those on, and those will, those will probably be Christmas gifts. So I think that is it for today. That's all my sort of updates. Uh, definitely let me know what you think about my plans and if you have any tips or suggestions with respect to fabric. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know, uh, to know more so that I can kind of feel less anxious about making, like biting the bullet on a purchase there. Um, yeah, so just wanted to say thanks again to everybody who's hanging out with me and chatting about my crafty endeavors. Um, this has been fun so far and I hope to do another video. Uh, the sort of two week gap seems good. I'm able to kind of do enough in two weeks that I feel like there's something to say, um, but it's not too soon either that it's like uh, overwhelming to do editing. Oh, also let me know what you think about the quality of this video versus my previous video. Uh, my previous video I just recorded on my computer with my webcam, whereas this I am recording with my phone. So which one's better? I don't know. <laughs> let me know. Um, yeah, so that's it for today. Thank you so much again for watching. If you liked it, I hope you'll like the video. And if you want to see more from me, hopefully you'll subscribe. Um, and yes, I will see you in the next one.